Hey everybody, welcome to Cafe Grit. Today I have Gabriella and Cena in the grit seat. And wow, she blew me away. I've known Gabriella for some time now and I knew she was super smart and she knows her shit, but I had no fucking idea. I know you're going to love her just as much as I do, so let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to Cafe Grit, the place to go when you've got a hankering for purpose, a taste for fulfillment, and you're tired of living the rat race. I'm your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Thanks for stopping by. Cafe Grit is now open for service. Hey everybody, welcome to Cafe Grit. I am your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Today I am so happy to have here in the grit seat, boom, Gabriella and Sina. Gabriella is a licensed psychologist. She supports, I think it's mostly international women, but maybe a man or two in there, uh, helping with their confidence, their well being, improving their relationships, prioritizing themselves. And she's also a lot of fun and a bright spirit. And I love her. And I'm so happy to have her in the grid seat. Welcome, Gabriella. Yay. Hey, thank you so much. I'm so, so happy to be here sharing time and space, virtual Yay. space with you. Beth. And Pancho and Mancho say hello to welcome. Pancho and Mancho are my little alpacas that uh, Gabriella named for me. Thank you very much. Very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> they are, as she says, they are a fusion of, uh, they, I don't know which one is which. They're just... Uh, so how are things going? You're in Europe. Are you experiencing the same kind of um, mother nature drunkenness that I am still experiencing, like air conditioning in the morning or in the evening? Yeah, it's, it's so weird here. I mean, it, it, one week ago, we had rain almost every day. And for here, for Valencia, where I'm now living, is uh, usually he, now in, at, the, at the end of April, April, we have already summer. And now it's starting to summer up, <laughs> but <laughs> I like that. but it's still very very cold. Valencia cold in in the night and in the mornings. So it's like I don't know what to wear and 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 <laughs> right. yeah, it's. I know I'm with you. I have um I'm I'm a little gussied up today because as we say here in the south, I'm gussied up um for this show although i'm i'm a little business on the top and then mm -hmm. warmth and and you know comfort on the bottom because it's uh it's a little cold today and i've got you know i got my pool open so i'm i'm looking forward to, to oh summer. wow okay yeah yeah i haven't swum in it yet because it's too cold but yeah how's your tolerance sorry but it, it, it interests me uh how is your yeah. tolerance rate for uh cold water my tolerance for cold water is actually pretty high. Now, I grew up in the state of Michigan in the States, which is the Great Lakes state. Mm -hmm. And we they're not known for, you know, they're not the balmy waters of the Caribbean. Let's just put it that way. So they're very large <laughs> bodies of water. So I will I can tell you that some friends of mine and I, um, we try to take a yearly trip to um, Lake Michigan, which is on the west side of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And one year we went, now this is in like July, and um, the water temperature, the surface water temperature was 61 degrees um, Fahrenheit, which mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that translates to to Celsius, but it's, let's just say that that optimum is 80. <laughs> this is 61. Okay. So, was, so yeah, so it's basically, you know, if you figure your body temperature in Fahrenheit is 98.6 average. So it's, but we swam in it, right? And enjoy not, did, you, did you enjoy it um you know once you get in the water you, your body sort of adapts but mm -hmm. um but yeah it would be it would not be my I, my ideal here and that's about where we're at right now we're in the like the low 60s still so because i i i grew up in chile and uh, in the in the in central uh, chile and the water there is always cold oh. i mean i i have no idea of fahrenheit so you you have to or not <laughs> but i would say maximum when it's really really uh, we have summer in february and january february uh like ho high summer you it maximums maybe 17 18 degrees oh yeah i know that because i i think yeah i think 12 is is somewhere around i'll have to look at it actually you know what i have a little calculator okay you know i should keep this on hand because i i talk to a lot of and i do that's why i have a little app but mm -hmm. um but yeah that doesn't sound very warm um, no. from what i'm remembering because i remember putting a post out there that was something in, about around 12 and thinking well that's very spring like so it can't be Tell me what is what is what is a good summer 
temperature temperature in, for, for the water i would say 23 23 22, okay 23 okay so yeah i'm not going to look it up because this could take me okay, forever yeah. but yeah i think but yeah I, I think you're probably dealing the same thing yeah that it's just really cold but you know when you were a kid did you just say screw it no, it was for me. It was like everyone, every kid is is like used to the drama before. Like you know, I hey, know it's so cold. Oh, oh, da, da, da. And then yeah, it, it was too hot outside, so you you have to swallow it and go anywhere anyway. Yeah. But at the beginning, it was yeah, I like, hey, know, I know. And and your dad usually picks you up and and throws, also throws you know, but <laughs> but uh, um, keeps you with him and and, yes, and, and yeah, inside yeah. the water. So it does like the, the game, but you can, <laughs> that was when I was a kid, when I met my husband, my husband was visiting Chile and uh, <laughs> he's from Austria, you know? So, so it's not like the super uh, sure, hot yeah. waters. Alps, they, they don't have, yeah. <laughs> they, exactly. They don't have a, a sea like ocean, but they have uh, lakes, a lot of them. Uh, and he said that the water was freezing cold and you can feel it in your bones, you know, uh, in summer, like in January. So it, it is it is uh, pretty interesting, the contrast, yeah. because it's really hot outside and, and the water is really cold. Yeah. Well, that makes it tolerable, I think, when it's super. That's why I'm so looking forward to, you know, I have my pool um, that I and I've just opened it a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. And now, and it's been cold. It's been, you know, a, I've been turning on my AC and my heat during the day. And I'm just, cause when it's, you know, if the water's super cold, but it's like, you know, really, really sweltering hot outside, then, you know, it's okay because it kind of feels good. You know, get, you, you will get cold after a while. And then when you mm -hmm. get out, it's really cold, but mm -hmm. <laughs> you just deal with it. <laughs> anyway, you know, we should yeah. have just talked all day about um, temperatures and thermometer, you know, and weather and stuff. But um, yeah. I do want to get to you because you're, okay. so you're so interesting. So uh, before we kind of dig into some stuff, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Where are you in your career? And, and what's making your heart sing right now? My heart sing. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, okay, so I'm a licensed psychologist, and I've been doing that for 20 plus years. I licensed Oh, you're not old enough to have been doing anything for 20 plus years. What? Well, I can tell you, I can brag a little bit, and I graduated from high school with 16. And oh. uh, yeah, I started the university with 17, and I graduated from university with 21. So yeah, that's why I, I look so young. And, and, I, and anyway, I have 20 plus uh, years of experience as wow. a licensed psychologist. And I worked for a long time in the corporate world. Uh, I'm sorry. In human resources. <laughs> I'm sorry to, no. no I mean, kidding. looking I'm looking kidding. back, looking back, it was a good uh, learning process, <laughs> but I'm so happy that I'm not there anymore. <laughs> and now my heart sings every time I see a client it's amazing how 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 I feel it in my body, the, the energy that my clients bring, even though they are struggling and they are facing difficult situations, especially now with a, a post slash a, a wild post lockdown, they are struggling <laughs> with anxiety, with depression, etc. But the work with my clients, uh, with a uh, internationals uh, is what makes my heart sing and I'm so 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 happy that I'm able and that I'm uh, given this opportunity to help people all around the world because yeah I love that I'm going to steal that from you <laughs> because it makes my heart sing that's a very accurate description of what yeah, happens it's it's yeah. a goal everybody should have is just, well, yeah. what is, what makes your heart sing? Well, we're going to get yeah. into a little bit more about um, what you do because I'm just, I am fascinated by it. Cause I've told you before that I can, you know, when I see your posts and when I first started to get to know you, I could mm -hmm. just so relate, even though I've never moved to a foreign country, but just having moved from a different state, you know, three States away to a place where I didn't know anybody and just, and, but I still spoke the language and the culture was generally, you know, um, very close to the culture that I left. There was mm -hmm. weren't, weren't any significant differences. And um, even given all of that, I just it was it's it's very challenging. So um, mm -hmm. I'm really fascinated by what you do. Um, so so this show is Cafe Grid and it is all about grit, which can mean many things to different people. But I want to know, Gabriella, what is your grit story? What does grit mean to you? What is your story? Uh, okay, I think uh, what we mentioned before about uh, giving up uh, corporate world, uh, uh, often actually, <laughs> because I did it once when I turned 30. 
uh, I have I had like a, like I told you before high school university and then directly to 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 a job to a proper job and I was uh, climbing the ladder overachiever I, I love exactly, it exactly yeah working twenty four seven like yeah. weekends and nights and like 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 I can imagine like a, like a sequence in a movie you know yeah. when oh, yeah. when they show like do, 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 do. <laughs> and uh, it, that was actually also my first move. Yeah, because I moved from a little town in, in, in Chile called Valparaíso to the big city, to the capital, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. And it was exactly as you can imagine. Awful. I felt lonely. I didn't oh. know anyone. Nobody wanted to be my friend because everybody was already, they, they were adults. Sure. They, that was post-university. So you don't have time anymore for new people, right? Yeah. Especially people from your self, from the same country. Right. Oh, and <laughs> you're, you're from a like little such... town. You're just from a little town. You're just a rube, a little, uh, you know, oh yeah, I've, I've <laughs> exactly. dealt with that too. <laughs> you are not exotic enough. I mean, yeah, maybe right. you speak funny, but that's it, you know? So right. <laughs> what you so... grew up with, cat? I would always get, because I, I I, uh, for a while, I lived uh, just outside of New York City, and it was I was just like, wow, you know, they just. Like, I think some people just thought that like Michigan is just this like I think either think of it as Detroit, which is you know has a, a stereotype that's not true, but or it's oh Michigan, oh you know geez, just like cows and stuff. I'm like no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah exactly so so yeah people uh, um, uh, made fun of me but but mm. in a good way no no not in a bad way but still because I was I came from a little town so not the cows but like the words that I used they, they some of some of the words were really uh, uh telling that w where I came from and like ah, ha, ha, she comes from Barbara, she comes from Barbara. oh so, yeah but it, it was okay it wasn't it's funny it wasn't but it's sad <laughs> Yeah, but I was really proud about it. and and I I always do that when when people mock me in again in a good way in, in a funny way not in right. a hurtful way. I'm I I used to uh, underline the mocks so I, I, yeah. I start to mock myself. So good for you. That makes it funnier. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I mean, life is not to take so serious. We have so many problems. So right. I don't. Uh, I so love well, that. Uh, continue with the story. Yeah. Uh, so I I was working and suddenly I said I'm going to turn thirty. And uh, no, actually, no, 28, but I was going to turn 30. You know what? 30 is on the horizon. That's a crisis. <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> so I said, okay, I have to follow my dream. I want to backpack through Europe. I, I was hoping for that for forever. And so I quit my job. Everyone, wow, everyone said, you're crazy. Uh, how are you going to do that? You're not going to find anything after. You are old you're not you know etc etc all the all the the typical cons about uh, quitting your job and just go travel you know yep. uh, but I did it anyway because I, that's where I am and I spent one almost one year traveling through Europe alone oh wow uh, how fun yeah. it was mm, mm, I, I, pff, magnificent is is a, a little word for this to describe that wow yeah and Every 20 year old dream, I tell you, when I was in the, in my 20s, it was, oh, yeah, we'll go backpacking through Europe. And and it's so to meet somebody who's actually done it. That's like amazing. Yeah. I'm and jealous. I actually, yeah, actually was like through Europe. I mean, easier. It, 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 it doesn't get easier. Right. If I if I, I would tell you, I don't know, Asia or Africa or Latin America, <laughs> <laughs> but Europe is the safest place to back, uh, backpack. Right. Yeah. It, that was uh, 14 years ago and uh, for a Chilean girl to do that in her late 20s quitting and traveling alone it was like you you are quitting your job you are traveling alone you don't know what's going to happen you are old etc etc so go, it was go, the worst go, go. thing exactly. do we need to call the doctors and get her committed <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah yeah apart from my family and from some members of my family and my closest friends because they knew uh, everyone else, my my uh, my boss offered me the double salary, and yeah. Wow. Now, were yeah. you a, was this after you got your your degree for your, your you were a psychologist? You were at this yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was. Oh, so you had all of that. You're no, no, you're no, no, also. No, no, no. Yeah, I was working in, in this corporation. Oh my gosh. I was I was the recruitment and selection manager to the whole country. I had wow. uh, five psychologists and and four or five admins. 
Uh, I, I was so boss. in addition to all of this craziness, because you're a single woman, you're going uh, onto a foreign country backpacking by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're also they're probably also thinking, well, she's a psychologist, just a psychologist, shouldn't she know better than that? <laughs> now the psychologists are all crazy, you know. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so she's she's allowed to 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 do that because she's a psychologist. <laughs> ah, I got you. That was your advantage right there. Uh, exactly. But, but I'm a, but I'm a psychologist. Oh, exactly. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Go, go, go. I got it. <laughs> so I did that, and actually, I came back to Chile after that year because I was uh, penniless, <laughs> oh. and they took me back. I came back to Chile on a Thursday and I was working on a month next oh Monday. God. That's amazing. Yeah. Like <laughs> that never were... happens. No. Wow. And she, they were like waiting for me because I was I was a great well, she'll worker. get it out of her system and then she'll come back. We we value exactly, her. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. awesome. Well, that's a testament to your, you know, the value that you had at that yeah. at that place. So But wait, 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 wait. Because one year later I quit it again. <laughs> <laughs> at the time for good because I, I moved to Europe to be with my with my husband but uh, and my, I think my boss knew she she always knew that I was not I was not, I was not staying a long uh, long time there but exactly one year enough to save enough money <laughs> to oh, move wow. again and and start yeah. a new life in Vienna yeah um, that's my grit <laughs> that is well that's true grit I mean honestly that is um I mean that one of one of my favorite grit words is bravery and courage. I mean that is seriously. I mean this is why I never did it. I don't know that I could have done it alone. I I, have, I could think of all the things that I actually seriously contemplated when I was in my my early and mid twenties. Um, one of them was backpacking through Europe. I never did that. I, I had a friend mm -hmm. who wanted me to. She really wanted one summer for to to work on a fishing boat in a like off of alaska now, wow. now they have shows about that now yeah. they have reality shows and i would not want to be on one of those ships so i'm glad we didn't do that but um you know i mean i you know i guess um i i can't um i did a few things that were probably um a little people said are you kidding me but never something like that and what a great experience too i, I imagine that you probably met a ton of people and I, I, you know, all, all roads lead to here, right? Your narrative now and where you're at right now that had to have been helpful. You probably were meeting people from all over the world that, you know, had varying levels of comfort in what whatever they were doing. So yeah, 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 absolutely. And if I can add something to that greet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Before I traveled, I was a, a country volunteer for something called Hospitality Club. That's nobody knows that, but it was before couch surfing. Oh, I don't okay. know if it's a, that's a, like hospitality oh, club yeah, was yeah. the step oh, yeah. before couch surfing. Wait so, a minute, <clears throat> somebody just told me about that. I think it was okay. um, Leslie Williams. I think was okay. And it's in the there's a there, yeah. I think that's what it's called, hospitality club or something to that effect. But it's like. A, where because she, she she was staying on a farm and I said how did you how are you staying on a farm did you know somebody that had the farm and she said no there's this whole club that you can belong to uh, and they can just they take their camper vans this was for okay. a camper van so it's similar uh, but yeah go ahead and tell me about so no no this one is it's like couch surfing the same thing you're going to stay with someone for free in the couch or in a spare, sure. a spare bed or whatever and the 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 slogan was uh, travel without moving. Like if you're receiving people from all over the world, you are traveling with them, uh -huh. like through through their eyes. Yeah. And I received, I would say, um, 30, 35 people not knowing them at all, except from their profile. And I, I, believe me, it was so, the, the atmosphere of this page was so beautiful because I never met them in person. Sometimes we, of course, we exchange messages and you had your profile like verified and people commented about you as a host or a guest. And I met them in my lunch time in, in the bus station or, or near the bus station. I gave them my keys from the, from my apartment and I came back to the, to work. And they could do anything in the apartment. What you, you know what they did? They cooked. Yeah. <laughs> they cleaned. They buy groceries or whatever. Never in never, 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 never something funny happened to me. Never. That is just so, amazing. 
those people I met, I would say 80% of them, I met again in Europe. And I was staying in, in their houses, on their apartments. So I would say I stayed in three or four hostels altogether this year, this, this the, the year that I traveled. And all the, the rest was were houses or apartments for people. That, that is fascinating. Before. So the people that you let use your place while they were traveling, then you ended up staying with them. It's like the circle of life in, in backpacking travel. Yeah. I, suck. I have to do my Simba. The poncho of life. <laughs> the poncho of life. Well, that's awesome. That's that's like, like that's amazing. I like I said, I um I just I, it's it's a it's a dream that every I don't can't even tell you how many of my friends when I was in my twenties we talked about backpacking through Europe or any mm -hmm. really even the United States, um, you know, even at home and never did. Um It's never too late, my dear. I know. Well, you know, it's funny you were talking about when you quit your job and people thought you were crazy. Now, you know, when you get into your like your 40s and 50s and you quit mm -hmm. your job for that, they go, oh, yes. Go. No, no. It's, no it's, it's like not you're crazy. It's like, yes, get out, yeah. get out of the rat race. Um, but I do want to I want to talk get get into a little bit more about what you do because I'm so yeah. fascinated. So mm -hmm. um so I, I, one of the things that I that I'm curious about are, are you know you've got you got these people and they're they're relocating and now they're in this completely new environment. Mm -hmm. What are like what is something that's that's pretty common that people experience? And then is there something that surprised you when you started working with folks that that they're ex, that were maybe consistently you saw that people experienced that you were like wow I never expected that or or yeah I expect maybe maybe you experienced it but you just thought it was just you. Mm -hmm. like what are some things that are good? Uh, okay, the typical thing that I experience myself and that I see over and over and over again is like the phrase that I always hear from every single client, I feel like a toddler or I feel like a child. Because when they move, they are the exp they, 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 the cultural shock, the culture shock and the, and the, uh, hopelessness or helplessness feeling of not knowing what to do or what to say or how to say it or where to go or where to ask help. Uh, Where's my lead... mommy and daddy, right? <laughs> exactly. Like I can't, I can't even go to the doctor or we, we talked about it, like, like a, a haircut or order a, a something to have lunch or a coffee or I don't know, go to the zoo because that this fear of something big is going to happen and I'm not going to able to be able to communicate, you know? And this, uh, this um, fear is so, 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 so big that some people can not even leave the house, you know, independent. Wow. All my clients are independent, more, most of them women, but they're independent. They have worked their whole life. Uh, they are used to solve things and like, no, not a problem i'm going to do it and then suddenly they feel like they don't they can't even go outside the house without fear with this this uh, i don't know i describe it like a, a spot walking with a spotlight the whole time you know like like this like <laughs> like yeah. being seen like oh they are going to find out that i'm not uh, i can't i'm not fluent or i, like, I can go you know and, wow. and that's that's very uh, interesting and also very common among people relocating. I can I believe that because I when I moved to Virginia that was one of the things even and again I had none of the language barriers and the culture barriers but it was just yeah. um you know then you add on top of all of that I don't know my way around mm -hmm. I don't know um you know I had a car and I could drive and I and so I learned but you know some people don't have cars mm -hmm. and they have to figure out how to navigate do I need to take a bus or a train or a, a metro and I don't know how to communicate where I want to go I can't mm -hmm. you know I mean I just I, I can't even imagine how uh, I, I that's I think that's a perfect phrase you know, I feel like a toddler because mm -hmm. I'm sure it's like a like a child who has lost its parents you have your parents guiding you through everything and you, but you know, here you are. It's like, okay, I just dropped my kid off it yeah. in the middle of Times Square. And yeah. <clears throat> wow. And the, the other thing linked to that is the, and that surprised me because I, I, I didn't experience it like, like strongly myself. And, and I've, I've discovered that especially among women, especially among high achieving women and pretty smart women, how they treat themselves. Mm. how they speak to to themselves how to they refer to themselves 
you know, and I'm pretty, I've, be, I've become pretty um, ninja, <laughs> if you may, in, in, in spotting that and, and showing them that, and they don't even realize it is so incorporated in their narrative and the way they, they see the world or they see themselves and how they describe themselves that it's really frightening to me to see these powerhouses treating themselves like that, like it, it, it masquerading in fun, you know, like joking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, everyone, more or less, I do that as well. But it, 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 this is constant. This is the... the, 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 the I'm, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> you know, like, like throwing that, that yeah. comment and then moving, you know, it, it's, if you're not aware of it, you can't spot it. And, and that's, that's really. Uh, uh, yeah, that is surprising challenge. to me. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it's not surprising. And like you said, we all, we all do it, but yeah. we, we do it, but we have um, a support network, right? We, we have, you know, our, our comfort zone, our friends, our family, <clears throat> in some cases are, for me, in a lot of cases, my online community. <laughs> um, but, you know, now here you are all alone. So I, I imagine it is a coping mechanism. So what, ha what, what is, what is the effect when, when people are not being kind to themselves? I mean, what is, what do you see is, is that, I mean, so, you know, I guess, you know, playing devil's advocate, why is that bad? Why is that bad not being good to you? Yeah, like, like just uh, self-deprecating, like or you know, okay. the mask, or the not not being compassionate towards yourself. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because it is the the. I mean, exactly. Some people think that being harsh to yourself it motivates you to be better, but it's the complete opposite. Because you are creating a story that you're telling, and then your brain. It sounds really complicated, but your brain get used to that. And okay, and, and and start to justify the things like okay, it didn't work because you're stupid. It mm. didn't work. Uh, it, you can't learn as fast. I don't know Chinese because you're stupid. You can't go out uh, and buy something by uh, by yourself because you're stupid. You know, it's not anymore like hey, you're stupid. You're not stupid. Go and buy something. You know, it's not. Confirmation, confirmation bias, you know, is uh, yeah. okay. You're stupid, so you're not able to do that. You're stupid, so you're not able to meet new people. You're, you're stupid. Da, 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 da. Do That's they start the to difference. believe it? Mm. That's yeah. So that's so sad. I'm so like yeah. so glad that there's. I mean that you that they have somebody like you out there. I mean I can't even imagine. And, and, and you know the the thing, Beth, is like these people, especially these people, because they are mental health aware and they are looking for help and they know that they have to change. They are very um, sus susceptible. You say susceptible, susceptible, sus like, susceptible. Yeah, susceptible to these like positive affirmations and and repeating mantras you know and that's fine and it's it can work but if you don't believe what you're saying it's like the fake it when you make it, it fake it till you make it yeah it, it has these limits right oh totally so, yeah so they they spend a lot of money on this fake it till you make it uh, positive affirmations etc but they are still in the, in the end treating themselves poorly so it's not a, it's yeah. not a, a not a deep transformation. It's only it, it happens. I don't know in the, in the surface, but no, in a deep level. I'm not even saying soul or something, but in the brain. You yeah, know? it's Your draining. Brain, too. It's emotionally draining when you're trying exactly. to constantly do that too. Do yeah. do do people um, when they're going through this journey and they're you know so we're we're talking a little bit about the the mental self care. Do they do they does it manifest physically too with do they, are they not prioritizing themselves are they um i mean you talked about you know that i don't know where to go out i can't go get my hair cut i mean does that does that all have a physical effect as well on what, how they take care of themselves absolutely and 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 about that they uh, when you move when we move i, I don't know what, if if that happens to you it happened to you as well we don't Keep, bear in mind the things that like, I don't know, weather or food or allergies or I don't know, uh, water, you know, yeah. things like that. I don't know if you say that in English, like hard water with a lot of, with a lot of salt. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. It changes everything. It changes your skin, your hair. I don't know. And, 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 and those things, those aspects are also influencing your mood, you know, and that's one thing. Yeah. 
you want to say something? Sorry, no, no, I... I'm, agree- I'm totally <laughs> agree. I'm just, you're, you know, oh, okay. you're, you're getting me thinking because I'm like, these are things that I would never have thought. Yeah. And, and allergies. I mean, that was the case with, um, I never had allergies in Michigan. I feel like I have them now. My yeah. dogs were a big thing when I moved here because they had, you know, th- things changed too. So yeah. those are like little things that you don't even think of. Exactly. And the water. Oh yeah. Oh yes. I grew up in the country, Gabriella. I know what hard water is. And um, okay. you know, I'm not sure my sister was a true redhead or if that was the rust in the water. That <laughs> oh my God. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, Allison. hopefully. I'm just kidding. I'm just jealous because they got <laughs> the beautiful Susie red. And hair. Yeah, they got the they got the beautiful red hair, and I got the ah, okay, the muddy brown. Okay. So I have to tease them anyway. But yes, go, continue. yeah, that's one thing. And the other thing is uh, sleeping habits and eating habits. Not even I'm not talking about super healthy veggie, you know, but uh, typical things like not eating chips at two in the morning, two a.m. You know, or uh, oh no, I'm not sleeping. Uh, I, I'm only sleeping. I don't know five hours per day, but that's okay. I can function anyway. Mm. Like those things affect directly your mental health, and you can work a lot on on yourself and the things that you do and and reframing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you don't sleep enough, <laughs> your body your body is going to give in sooner than sooner than later. So this is th- those are my I don't know those aspects. I, I address them in my first sessions. Because if you are not uh, taking care of that part, you can't take care of your brain and your and your soul, I'm if just, you may. I'm so blown away because <clears throat> I remember when I, I took a trip, and this, I wasn't even moving, I took a trip to Italy, a little, mm. little romantic adventure before I met the love oh. of my life. Uh, mm. um, but I, I, re- I just, re- I'm just, as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, um, what if I had had fallen in love and moved there? And I just remember how exhausted I was in that week, because um, in the States, at least in my, in my Midwest culture, you know, we have our, our routine. But then I went to Italy and it was like eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. And we're still sitting at the dinner table eating and drinking wine. And I'm just, you know, like dozing off. And I, <laughs> and I can't understand what anybody's saying. You know, that was a big thing. It was really hard. Um, it was hard for me to, to just be in a normal situation and not mm-hmm. be able to communicate. Um, and I know that my um, my friend was was ha- also having a difficult time. We had dinner with some uh, Americans, and he, mm-hmm. was, he was sort of like, "I need, you know, I'll be nice and get, give Beth some people that she can actually talk to for a night." And I know he was just not, you know, he he spoke in, uh, English, but not great. And I know he was um, getting mentally exhausted, just trying mm-hmm. to interpret everything. So mm-hmm. all those little things, it's just I just would never have. I, I imagine that. Um, that you know, I know that all of that stuff just creates a, an emotional turmoil. And I know you've talked before about emotions that are, you know, that you said emotions are are useful. Yeah. So what it talk a little bit about that in, yeah. the, in this context? What does that mean? I mean that people get uh, used to so well, especially again women, uh, neglect slash ignore slash bury the negative emotions. Uh, I will focus because there are so many, but the, I will I will focus on anger, because uh, in, in in I don't know what is your, what your experience is, but in Latin America and also in Europe, less and less, but in our generation, like uh, uh, thirty five plus, we. Uh, I'm not 35, Gabriella. I'm no, no, 35 plus. I I'm, said. Only tw- I'm only 20, so I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. So maybe you can ask your mom after. Yep. And maybe she can give you an insight about that. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Continue. It's okay. Oh, yeah. um, wait. Ah, um, we are constantly, we were constantly uh, set, uh, get uh, or, or hear this. Okay, little girls, uh, don't get angry. You look so ugly when you're angry you're so why bossy. you don't smile or oh yeah oh or, yeah, yeah smile you're so bossy yeah you're so bossy no no so what yeah. we what do you do we do we cry to express anger we cry That's because true. it's the ac- social acceptor uh, the, yeah. the socially accepted way for a woman to yeah. show her anger her her irritability annoyance etc so uh when c- clients come to me they are so used to neglect their anger. They are not in contact with their anger that they can they can even they can't even name it as anger. 
they say annoyance, irritability, uh, and that's it. That's that, that, that anger, that the word angry, I'm angry, it takes a couple of sessions to get it out of your system like that with that. And the other thing is to express it because they are so used to, we are so used to cry when we're angry. <laughs> Without even knowing it, that we're Without, angry. Because you're so frustrated and the, the, the tears burst, but that's not the the um, mission. The, the I don't know, the, the word doesn't come to my mouth now, but the mission, uh, uh, the, ob the, the goal, sorry, the goal for anger is, uh, sorry, for sadness to cry is to, lower your energy is to take you back from where you are and take care of yourself, lower your energy, charge your batteries and rest. You know, that's the, the, the mission or the, the, the purpose of sadness. The purpose of anger is to move you. So when you cry, when you cry your anger, yeah, of course you cry your anger out. Why are you? You're tired. You know, the purpose of tears, but the anger is still there. You don't, you didn't release it. You just right. calmed it. You yeah. Know? So what happens? It's coming back and it's coming back stronger. And what do we do? We direct it towards ourselves, mm. you know? And I thought, I thought you were, I thought you were going to say our, you know, our, our significant other, but so probably that happens too, but you're right. It's mostly because we're women because we we still are inherently brought up to we have to take care of people we can't you know so where do we direct that oh is, that is just amazing your insight like god yeah. that you're i mean you're just i'm like i'm getting chills listening to you because you're so spot on and it's not even just it's probably exponentially um dr dramatized when you're in this situation but that's what we as women all do to some yeah. extent exactly wow. And so, so the purpose, and that's why I, I, I talk about all emotions are useful because they have a purpose and purpose of anger. And I love anger. <laughs> I would say I'm a fan. Uh, it <laughs> move us to change. Because when we are angry, we are reacting to injustice. We are reacting to something, uh, to, to, to a boundary that was stepped on, stepped up, stepped something. Yeah. Uh, crossed. Yes. We are reacting to something is wrong and we are not happy with it we're not happy it is damaging us you know that's that's the information that anger is giving us so we have to focus on the need what is what need do i do i have to fulfill so that anger goes away or 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 comes down you know not ignoring it so that's that's the purpose i'm like I, i'm gonna um I, i'm telling you i'm gonna go back and rewatch this because this is this is totally Whew, you are like hitting me um, home because you're so spot on. The next time I, I, cause I, I just said this to myself the other day and <laughs> I was, I had a situation of something was going on. It was just completely internal. And I was, I got, I had a meltdown as we say, mm -hmm. and I, I um, was crying and I was just like, and I, and, and, I, and I was looking back and I was like, okay, why am I in this situation? I didn't do anything wrong. So mm -hmm. why am I so frustrated? And I realized that I, exactly as you say, that it was anger. I was angry, angry at myself, angry at the world, whatever. And um, yeah, but you're right. I did. Um, I did. I really, and now I have to ask myself, did I really address it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did do the, you know, the calming thing and I slept on it and I felt better, but yeah, no, I think I did, but you know, so, validation. You know, calming calming yeah, is not, it's not a good, it's not a good uh, <laughs> anger relief. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. Now what is movement? Movement in any way possible. You don't have to jog for two hours. You just can go outside and walk fast. Movement with a little tempo. That's right. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's a good thing, you know. But even if you're at the office or home office and you can't move because whatever, go and wash the dishes. Go and uh, climb up and down the stairs for, I don't know, five minutes go to the bathroom and shake your body you know it sounds so haha but really it that's what i do for example when i don't have time to do anything else go to the bathroom and i shake it for i don't know two minutes like the whole body and 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 saying something like 
a stupid rah, 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 but not to me so that to to <laughs> the universe or whatever somebody. <laughs> so it, so exactly yeah. or a pillow screaming is a great way to release <laughs> anger yes i've done that yeah but <laughs> screaming from the top of your lungs not not just like from here but to br breathe in and release a scream and of course that's not socially accepted you're not going to go to the city center and scream <laughs> right but, <laughs> but those of said, us who work from home um can appreciate because i have absolutely done that i have yeah. absolutely done yeah. the just <gasps> just a barbaric yeah. yop yeah. barbaric <laughs> yop like the, like in the movie yeah? yes exactly <laughs> and and that's the thing after that after you have released the anger you can you can calm you know like breathe and meditate and whatever but the anger as long as you're not release it is going to stay there somehow somewhere you that know? is so, like so powerful it really is because um, and and i've 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 talked about this in the context of stress but a lot of stress is anger in mm -hmm. that, and, and I'm a firm believer of this, that that movement, um, taking action, physical action is going to change our brain much more than thinking and, and dwelling and, and trying to you know, plan, organize, whatever it is that you're doing in your brain is going to mm -hmm. move us to action. And I think mm -hmm. this is kind of plays into that too, that that um because i do this i i will find myself getting a knot in my stomach i've got a lot coming at me and i'm behind and i haven't done a podcast and mm -hmm. and when i feel that knot um my 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 previous reaction was just to you know spiral i just would uh, you know the self-deprecation the inner voice mm -hmm. shut up liz um but now i just say okay beth go go clean something Mm -hmm. just something that you don't have to think about but you're where you're physically moving and it's so helpful so I, I, this is just fascinating that you're talking about this in the contrast context of psychology yeah. and yeah. Um, well-being. Yeah. So um, I want to talk a little because, because I, if there's somebody out there who is kind of listening to this or watching this and thinking, oh wow, what are, I mean, tell me, tell me about this person. Tell me somebody who might be, you know, what, what is, what describe the person who might come to you. Okay. Uh. Oh, I would say a, a woman, but also I work with men. But my 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 message is 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 mostly directed to women because those are the ones uh, uh, um, more open to to work with a psychologist. Um, so she's a woman. She's uh, in between twenty five and forty five, fifty. Uh, she was. Uh, living abroad or she's still living abroad or she's thinking about moving abroad M abroad that that word is something special in their lives they, they they have experienced life abroad and they know how it is or they are uh, experiencing it through their partners for example that they didn't move because uh, whatever but they fall in, fell in love with someone and they moved to their country and they are uh, experiencing or dealing with um, things, with with, um, with things, with challenges or with problematics that are triggered or exacerbated, but by living abroad or dealing with uh, multiculturality, anxiety, um, loneliness, uh, self-deprecation, um, imposter syndrome. Um, what else? Uh, identity crisis, uh, insecurity, mm. uh, like who am I right now? What I was and what I want to go, where I want to go, like uh, finding a purpose, etc., etc. They are very mental health, uh, health aware. They are willing to work on themselves because I, I give them work to do, <laughs> you know? Uh oh. Yes. <laughs> and to the, the willing to see things that are not that nice, but they, with the purpose of getting better, to feel better, to understand themselves better. And when they do that, they, they lie, their life improves like uh, substantially and sustainably, not only for a moment, but uh, they know, they, they learn the tools, how to make their lives better, even if they're not working with me anymore. So, so those are the fascinating. Basics. You are, you are mm -hmm. so legit. I mean, it's just like, I mean, I've talked to you so many times just, you know, in other venues, um, mm -hmm. zoom calls and, and, and I get a little bit of, but I just really haven't talked in depth to you about what you do. And it's just, it's amazing. Do you think, um, 
I know you work primarily with women, but you have worked with men before. Do you think men manifest this experience um, differently than women do? They must, right? Uh, oh, that's a re- really, really good question. I'm working with men again after a while. I, I haven't. And they manifest, they, they express it differently. But the things that they're dealing with are the same. Anger is a very, very big issue with men as well. And emotions, expressing emotions or not expressing emotions is a very, very, very damaging uh, uh, aspect in their lives because they are, again, uh, thought that uh, thought that they are not uh, uh, they are not men enough if, if they express their emotions and they don't know how to. That's why they become aggressive or they, they, they can't regulate their emotions because they are not related to their emotions. I don't know if I explain myself. They, they yeah. are not in touch with their emotions. So that's why they have this burst or this, this shutting down and uh, um, isolation, like not relationships at all, or not involving, not connecting with people, you know, in a deeper level because they are afraid on, uh, about how they are going to react. So this is the, the emotional aspect is is very similar. It's it's different um, how they deal with it, but it's the, the disconnection are this. I don't want to see this emotion or I don't want to be connected with that emotion. It's how do you say transversal? Like uh, uh, yeah, um, for men and women. I would. I mean, I mean that sounds spot on. I would imagine that just just generally, just the way men and women are still brought up in this world that, that it's you've described women as they're they're expressive emotionally but they may be expressing it in ways that are not helpful or or um that they should be you know they could be doing better thing or like the anger mm-hmm. instead of you know okay crying but you know moving or getting it out or and not and, and dealing with it um, mm-hmm. whereas men tend to suppress the emotional um they still have the emotions they just um or, you know, still to this day taught, you know, well, you know, men don't cry and, you know, you've got to be the, and I imagine if you're, especially if you're the provider, or, or I'm sure that's a whole other dynamic that we probably will talk about next time is that the spousal, you know, or if I'm the woman and I'm, I'm the breadwinner, or if I'm the man and I'm, and my, um, I'm the breadwinner, or if my spouse is not happy to, or, yeah. you know, there's a whole other dynamic there. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, I want to just tangent a little bit into a um, before we wrap up a little um, kind of a generic. So, um, so you are, you know, this this show's about grit, but it's also about finding fulfillment, whatever that is. Some people find mm-hmm. that in the corporate world. Some people have their own businesses. A lot of people, um, you know, running their own business. So, what do you think um, for you, just generally? Um, about you, so you 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 have your own business, right? I mean, it's your you don't work for a corporation or mm. a company. Mm-hmm. What do you think is the best part about that? And what is the one thing that you don't really like or, or that you wish you could change about running your own business? Uh, <laughs> do, do we need another me, half an hour don't, for don't that get one? Me started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think in the end, it's, it's, it is worth it. But the fantasy uh, that... A lot of people have that the freedom and the liberty and the flexibility and it's not quite like I mean in my experience and the, the, the ones that I've seen around me it's not quite like that let's say yeah. uh, I really miss the the nine to five in the sense of okay this my work gets done at five or at six or whatever and that's it and I'm going home and I disconnect and that doesn't happen. I mean, I, I you have to work constantly on disconnecting, disconnecting, marketing yourself, selling yourself is something that, especially I don't know in, in, in different careers, but in psychology, when I study psychology, it's like the worst thing you can do is to market yourself. You are an academic, you know, you are a respected professional. People should come to you, like people, I don't know, like the genie of the bottle. I don't know how they imagine that, but that, you know. <laughs> And they will come. I exactly, am. exactly. I will say, come, come, and then they, they will rain, <laughs> come, you know? Come. Exactly, Roger. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that, those things are, are um, I miss that from corporate world, like the structure, and the, that I'm going there and I do my work and that's it, you know? And, and I don't have this because I, I have to be a psychologist, but also a marketing expert and, and sales expert and yep. la, 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 and web design expert. I mean, I don't have to, but I'm a little. So, yeah, I do that. Um, yeah. So so 
that's from the like, like the the cons of 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 or what I miss from corporate world. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> in the at the end of the day, I can I do can I do can I can decide what I do and what I don't do, how I work and with with, with whom I work, and uh, how many hours. When 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 you when I you are able to train yourself to be flexible and to take time off and to disconnect. That's that's um, that freedom is priceless, but it requires yes. discipline. It sounds so so like, like paradoxical, but it requires discipline to get there. I'm still working on it. Yeah. I'm not quite there yet, but uh, it can happen. But it requires discipline to to set boundaries to yourself because we demand so much of ourselves that we we, we find ourselves working. I don't know. 18 hours per day right or or for free or you know um exactly. underpaid. Or with people yeah. that or with people that yeah. we don't want to work uh, right with, with this etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah. yep well that's uh, that's awesome it's been such a great um to talk to you i'm just like my mind is exploding we're gonna have to do a second show but i have to ask you one final question and i know yeah. you kind of jokingly told me not to but um gabriella why do you hate harry potter so much <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Everybody loves her. You know, I was I was on Twitter the other day. I've I've been this is, I've been, a, this is a spotlight. <laughs> you know, right now she's got the light bulb hanging over her head. Now, no, so I was on Twitter the other day, and somebody had tweeted, you know, hey, if you were on a first date with somebody, and they and they told and they recommended a book to you, what book would they recommend that would make you not want to have a second date with them? So a lot of people put stuff like. Um, the, uh, you know, Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. A lot of people don't like Ayn Rand. So Atlas Shrug came up and some people, you know, the Bible and just, mm -hmm. and, and there, there are some consistent things, but, and I was telling my husband, I say, see, nobody said Harry Potter because <laughs> everybody loves Harry Potter. And, and then I found somebody who said Harry Potter, but it was like one person in 6,000. So, okay. But um, that was me. No, no. And that was, and I said, I, and it was Gabriella and Cena. <laughs> so. No, I'm kidding. I I love Harry Potter. I think a lot of people do, but it's okay. It's okay. I don't. Can, I still can, love can you. we still be friends? Yeah, we can still, still be friends. We can still be friends. All right, Gabriella. Well, it has been such a pleasure to have you in the grit seat today. You always have fascinating stories. I had no idea because you know we we kind of talked a little bit beforehand, but we didn't. I don't get a lot. I didn't get a lot of um, details, and that's cool. I like it that mm -hmm. way. Um, mm -hmm. I love the inside. I love that you take what you do so seriously. But you also have fun and you're just real and legit and I, I love you so much. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, but it was a pleasure. And I'm looking forward to the second part. <laughs> Yay. I know. I think we, we two or three part. I think we I need to have a group because some of our, our group sessions I love a lot. So I think maybe mm -hmm. we have to have a, a group session too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks everybody. Ciao. And we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.